Hello friend, welcome back. Lot of students ask me about to create this video because recently Laravel 11 is now released. So if you're already working with the Laravel 9, if you're already working with the Laravel 10, so now what exactly the new updated in Laravel 11? So friend, in this video, I will cover almost everything what exactly the new updated is coming in Laravel 11. So in this video, I will complete almost everything. Before we start it, I want to share one thing with you. When any new version actually release, it doesn't mean that it's totally changed. Only they have some of the few new features will be added for your better understanding and make the things happen in very good way. Okay, so you don't need to worry about it if you already know that Laravel 9, if you already know that Laravel 10, so Laravel 11 will be just like that same. So there have some of the few changes in this video step by step I will cover almost everything I hope you will like it very much so first things in Laravel 11 I like it so much that is very much minimalistic application before when you install that Laravel 9 or 10 some of the unnecessary file when you install that Laravel 10 then automatically before that is stored in your project but in Laravel 11, it's actually minimalistic total application. Which things will be needed? Everything is in here. If you want to add different type of features, you have to do, you have to install it. Don't worry, everything will be very clear. Step by step, I will show you everything in this video. This video is sponsored by the Eraser.io, which is a very powerful tool that let you create professional looking diagrams for variety of purposes. You can use it make flowcharts to visualize processes, architecture diagrams to map out systems, and even ER diagrams to model databases. I'm using it and I really like it so much. It's very easy to use, very user-friendly interface to make diagram accessible for everyone from beginner to professional. Which things I like it so much in Eraser, you can work with your team member in real time on the same diagram, making it a great tool for collaborative projects. So if you're a developer, then that will help you a lot. And also you can integrate that things with the GitHub and offers code as diagram functionality. So it's a very great fit for the developers who need the documents, their code. They have the three portion. One is a document portion. Another is the both portion. That means here you should be also display your all the documentation in here and also your diagram that should be displayed in particular that position. Okay. So you can actually manage both of these in one place. Uh, it's very nice one of the parts and also if you only want to use that canvas you can also use that canvas you can see that is also now successfully loaded all that your diagram okay your diagram that will be loaded and if you also want to design it you can also design it very interactive one of the things like from here you can actually select it and from to this position if you want to use some of the background color you can change that background color as per your demand if you want to make it as a solid then that will be as a solid if you want to make it large and then small then our outline will be also updated okay here you can use it you can use it one of the this type of one of the shape if you want to use it as a circle shape you can also use that circle shape if you want to load that some of the line you can also load it okay and also if you want to put some of the text you can also able to definitely use some of the text and from here if you want to change the text color you can change it so it's very interactive one of the tools you can check this out so here I have actually pointed out some of the things in Laravel 11. I now I one by one I want to share everything with you. First of all, that will be it should be upper than PHP 8.1. So if you are using that local host ZAM, right now I'm using that local host ZAM and in here uh, when you install it after that uh, when you run that your Apache and then MySQL make that sure you have to do you have to use PHP version um, upper than the 8.1. So I have already installed that ZAM and here I have already if you want to check it into the local okay that means if you check it in your local host. I show you right now if you go and now you can see I'm using that welcome the exam and Windows I'm using the PHP version as 8.2.4 okay here when you access that your local host dashboard if you go to get your PHP um, info and in here there is a PHP version right now I'm using as a 8.2.4 so if you're using that older version of the PHP then make that sure that is a minimum here you have to do you have to add it that means your PHP version minimum that should be upper than as a PHP 8.1 so that is our first thing okay 
So here I have already installed it. My PHP version is 8.4.2.4. That means now we can able to install that Laravel 11 one of the project. So here, friend, I have already installed one of the Laravel 10 project. So now I want to actually compare both of these with you. So that is one of the Laravel 10 project here. Better I want to do and to take it into the sublink text editor. Okay, here I have already installed that Laravel 10. So if you want to also install it, you can install it simply go to that documentation and into this documentation. If you select it as a Laravel 10, and from here you have to do you have to go to that the create Laravel project. So each and everything will be same. You can see then you have to do you have to run it. So right now I have already installed one of the Laravel 10 project. Now I want to down to install another Laravel new one. So that will be as a Laravel 11. Okay. So right now here that is a Laravel 11. And now I want to do I want to also create another new project with the Laravel 11. So now let's check this out here. If you want to create it, simply go to that our create Laravel project and into this create Laravel project right now that will be our command line. And here that is a composer. I hope you already know about this part here. If you go to that composer official website from here, you have to do you have to simply go to the download and make that sure you install that composer. So make that sure you install it. Now by this composer, I want to don't install Laravel 11 project. So that will be who which is very common uh, with our Laravel 9, 10. So now I hope at that point you already know about it. So in this video, I only want to discuss about what is the new update in Laravel 11. Okay. Now before doing this i want to create this project i copy it and now in particular this same folder okay into the same folder i want to create another new one i open with the cmd and then in here i want to paste it so right now i want to create another new project name i want to create another new project as a laravel that will be as 11 okay so that will be our common line as a composer create and project laravel and 11 as a my put that our file name as a laravel 11 now click as a enter now that will be downloaded everything from to the internet okay here you can see it's now downloaded everything from to the internet and it may also take little time so better when it will be done and i will come back again here you can see it's already created one of the project folder name as a laravel 11 so when that will be done i will come back again here you can see our Laravel 11 project is now successfully created. Everything is now successfully downloaded from to the internet. So make that sure you are connected with the internet. Now I want to do, I want to run this project. So here if you want to run it, what exactly you have to do? We have to go particular this folder, right? That means here you can uh, change that your folder name. That means here that will be the change directory and our directory name, I name it as a Laravel, Laravel 11. Okay, now click as a enter and you can see it's now written direct from our uh, Laravel updates to our Laravel 11 folder. So now here I want to do, I want to run it as a PHP artisan and then serve. So that will be as a PHP artisan serve. Now click as a enter. Now our Laravel 11 project should be run. If you copy it and now I want to go and in here I want to paste it. Hmm, you can see that is our new interface for the Laravel 11. And you can see right now I'm using that Laravel 11.0.8. And now I'm using that PHP version also its display as a 8.2.4. So that is the our new interface. So now I want to do I want to compare some of the code from here. What exactly the things is now it changes in particular that position here now one by one to show you like here that is it should be upper than the PHP 8.1 and after that where is exactly the uh, PHP that is API dot PHP route file. That means now I want to compare both of this file. So that is the Laravel 10 one of the project. So into this Laravel 10 project if you go to that our routes and into this routes you will uh, you may get this type of one of the things right as a api.php the channels.php the console.php and web.php and now i want to open our laravel 11 project here but i want to open it here if you go i want to open with the cmd now now here i want to open it with the visual studio code so that will be the code here i want to place it now that will be open it with the visual studio code okay great so in laravel 11 what exactly the changes here now if you go to that our routes folder here you can see they have the no api.php they have the no another one another one as a channel and the console.php only there has a two file one is the, our web.php i will want to compare it then everything will be more clear and you can see there is a route and they have the api they have the no api they have the no channels.php only they have the console.php and then web.php 
So here, as I told you, this is very minimalistic because here, which things is not needed. Right now, if you want to create some of the web application, you don't need to actually add any API PHP, right? So if you actually create some of the API, then your, your API will be needed. So right now, for if you want to create some of the web application, API will be not needed. Only it will be needed that our web.php. So as I told you, it's very minimalistic which things is needed. You can actually use it rather than all that unnecessary file that is simply shorted out from to our total project. So it will make our total side is very light. I hope you get the point. So now if you want to uh, working uh, for the API, that means in Laravel 9 or 10 here, you by default, you will get this type of one of the API.php, but in 11, they have the no API, right? But if you want to create some of the API, in that case, you have to do you have to actually create it that means i want to show you here that is actually our project right here but i close it if you go to that our laravel 11 project but i want to open it with the cmd and into the cmd now i want to create one of the api so if you want to create this api in that case you have to do you have to call it as a php artisan and then the um, install install api okay api so i hope you will get the point which things will be needed you can actually install it rather than by default that will be not supported okay now if you want to install it the api that will be as a php artisan install api click as a enter now that should be install it here you can see there is a composer json has been updated and now successfully um, downloaded everything everything and you can see it's now successfully created okay so that means you also show as a new database migration has been published would you like to run all pending database migration so for now i want to make it as a no now click as a enter now api is successfully installed and now if you go to your project again here i want to go back and now you can see that is the api.php is in here so if you working with the api then you can actually install that api rather than it's totally fine i hope friend you get the point and also if you compare with the laravel 10 there is also another one as a channel.php so if you want to working with the channel.php if you want to create it by default that will be not in laravel 11 so if you want to access it that means if you want to create it in that case again we have to run another command uh, here if you want to run it that will be the php artisan okay that will be the php artisan and then install so by default that will be not exist in your boilerplate if you want to access it if you want to need this file you have to do you have to simply install it which i really do like it so much so it will be as a very light version right now so i make it as a install and that will be the install as a broadcasting okay that will be the broadcasting bro adcasting okay that will be the broadcasting now here if you click as the enter now you can see that is our publishing broadcasting configuration file the publish channel route that is a file so also it successfully display as a do you um, would you like to install laravel reboot so now i make it as a no i make it as a enter and that is also costing that another one because i i don't want to use it but you can see that is a channel.php is now successfully created here also i want to make it as a no okay now it's fine now our channel.php is in here our api.php is also in here as i told you everything already ready made into the boilerplate but here if you want to access it you need to do you need to install this package so now our another one another one uh, that is our channel i hope you get the point channel.php is also now created and now in this video i want to discuss about our where is the middleware folder file which is very very important and also where is the kernel.php and where you can configuration the middleware is very very most important things now i want to, want to discuss about that things with you here if you go to that laravel 11 pro that means 10 project into the laravel 10 here if you go to that our app and into this app you will get that models folder in our http you will get that middleware folder and that is all that by default middleware will be exist in particular that position and you when you create another new middleware what exactly you have done when you create another new middleware you have actually you have to do you have to register that new middleware into the kernel.php right so here that is actually kernel.php but right now if you want to compare this code with the laravel 11 what exactly that will be do here if you now go to uh, that our app.php into this app.php you can see there is a model is in here and if you go to that our http into this http they have the no middleware folder so they have the no middleware folder and also they have no kernel.php 
So now if you want to create some of the middleware, what exactly you have to do? So better I want to uh, share everything with you. So first of all, I want to also create another multi-authentication, then everything will be more clear to you. Okay. So if you want to create that authentication system in Laravel 11, I want to first of all install that Laravel Breeze package, then everything will be more clear. I go to that our Laravel installation folder. As I told you in particular, on this video, I want to cover almost everything. In that case, if you go to that our packages and if if you go to that breeze right now we are using laravel 11 okay so into this laravel 11 i have already installed that laravel 11 project now here i want to do and to install that breeze so if you want to install that our laravel authentication as a default authentication for the breeze here now i want to do and to come com run this command that will be the composer required laravel breeze i want to do and to install it i copy it and now in here that is a laravel 11 project in here i want to do and to paste it now i click the enter now that will be installed that laravel breeze in our project here you can see it's now downloaded everything from to the internet so it's successfully done you can see it's successfully done that means laravel uh, or breeze is now successfully installed now we are using that uh, version we are using that uh, laravel breeze version as a 2.0 okay which is fine that is the latest version everything is fine and after that what exactly we have to do we have to go we have to go to that our php artisan breeze install now i want to done to copy it and now after that here we have to do have to run it so that will be sorry here we have to run i want to better copy it again i copy it and then i want to do want to install it that will be the php artisan breeze install now click as the enter and you can see it, it, it will be actually ask you some of the questions that means which uh, breeze is tech you want to install i want to do want to install that our blade right that i want to create on the web application so here i want to select it as a blade we have to do we have to write down as a blade i want to write down it as a blade so that will be the blade now click as the enter and now it's ask you another questions would you like to dark mode support right now i make it as a no and also another one which testing framework do you prefer so by default they are suggested as a php unit and if you want to access that our php unit here we have to do have to access it as a one right so i want to make it as a one right now click as the enter and now that will be installing your node dependency Okay, so here it may take little time and here you can see it's now successfully installed. Okay, that is a breeze scaffolding installed successfully and also is getting one of the error as a during build. Now I want to check it here if you go to that our project and into this project I want to refresh it and you can see our authentication is successfully loaded as a locking and register if you go to that our locking page and it's now getting one of the issues as a vit manifest not found. Okay, that is a beast manifest dot rot found here. We have to do have to run as a npm run dev. I want to do I want to run it here. After that, I want to run as a npm run dev. Now click as a enter. Now let's check this out. Here you can see it's now successfully run that our project. Okay, so our project is now running. And now if you go to that again, click as a refresh. Here it's now show as a plugin with input analysis fail to resolve import that Laravel echo. So that is actually one of the package. It's not getting that our echo.js. So here, if you want to do, if you want to install it, first of all, better I want to, don't to install that package. Here, if you want to install it, we have to do, in particular, this project area, it's now already running, better I want to do to close it, okay? I want to close it by the pressing that control C, and I make it as a yes, and that is our project. So here, I want to don't to install it, one of the in, uh, NPM install, and then that will be as a Laravel Eco, and that will be as a parser JS. Now, click as a enter, uh, here I want to do, I want to install it. Okay, here it's now successfully installed. Okay, now that is successfully installed. And now again, I want to run it. I want to run that npm run deb again. Now click as enter. Now let's check this out. Yes, you can see. Now our project is now successfully running. And here if you go, yes, it's now successfully completed. It's now successfully um, load that our e locking page. If you want to access that our register page, it's now also successfully loaded that our register page. So better friend, I want to create one of the multi authentication system. That means now I want to create two of this user. One will be as an admin and that will be as a user. Then our middleware issue. That means a lot of students actually ask me about it. And also that is very important that 
how we can create some of the middleware, how we can uh, register that middleware. Now everything will be very clear. Okay. And also how you can set up your database that is also will be very clear. So now that is very important. One of the part actually I have noted. So if you're already working with the Laravel 9, if you're already working with the Laravel 10, most important part will be this one. So I want to do, I want to share that things with you. If you understand this part and rest of everything will be just like that same as you already done it in the Laravel 9 or Laravel 10. Okay. Now let's do that work. For doing this, I want to do, I want to create one of the new database. Okay, here if you have to create this database, uh, that is in our database. And into this database, if you go to the your local host PHP my admin, you can create any type of database as per your demand. Okay, here only you have to you have to put your database name, and if you click as a create, then your database will be created. So I have already created one of the database like as a student one. So that is totally empty here. I want to do, I want to update that our database. So that is our database name as a student one here. I copy it and now also one thing will be very clear here. That is, that is some of the default database they are using that is SQLite. Okay, here also you have to do, you have to change it. I show you in that case we have to do we have to go to that our Laravel 11 project and into this 11 project if you go to that our dot env so into this dot env here if you go you can see by default that will be as a comment out and also that is a db connection they are using by default as a SQLite if you also um, compare this code with your Laravel 10 project, if you go to that Laravel 10 and into this 10, if you go to that dot env and you can see you will get into the Laravel 10, you may get this type of one of the things, right? By default, they are using that MySQL and host, everything will be by default as a ready-made, but here into this 11 area, that will be as a height, that means comment out. So first job is you need to do, you need to comment out it. So you make it as a comment out for the our host. I want to comment out that post and I want to comment out our database that is I have created I have created this database name I name it here I name it here as a um, student one right so that is actually our database name I name it as a student one so I simply paste it and also username here you have to do have to open comment out by default right now I am using that username as a root so by default right now here into this uh, my database I'm using that my default uh, username as a root and I don't have any password so that is the reasons here I make it as a clean okay and now also I want to do I want to change it as a SQLite SQLite I want to do I want to use it and that will be I want to use it as a MySQL okay so here I copy it and now in our Laravel 10 that means Laravel 11 area I want to want to change it as a SQLite to as MySQL and now if you click as a save all here that's all okay so that will be actually a little bit changes in laravel 11 so in our dot env area here you have to do you have to make it as a comment out all that your host port database the username and password and also i changed it our connection that will be as a mysql so when you use it as a mysql also here we have to do we have to update this information in that case we have to do we have to go to that our config rather than it, it should be actually show you some of the error here you have to go to that our config and into this config you have to go to the database.php and into this database.php here you can see that is a connection that have the two different connection one is the SQLite connection and all that is our SQLite connection related every information is in here and that is also another one as a marine BD okay so also there is a past BD that is a SQL so multiple things in in particular this area here now I want to do here if you go you can see that is actually our MySQL right so into this MySQL area here by default they are using that UTF-8 uh, MB4 and 09 that is double zero AC and then CI so if you go to that our database if you go and if you create some of the new database here you can say I'm, I'm actually using that is our UTF-8 MD4 general CI okay so here we have to do we have to actually change it here rather than that will be shows you some of the error in that case here we have to change it to like this one okay that will be as a empty uh, utf8 mb4 unicode unicode C ci okay so that is a unicode ci here in that particular this area you have to do have to update rather than you will get some of the error so make that sure here you have to do have to update so better i want to do to update it right now i updated as a unicode ci for the mysql 
okay so and rest of everything will be just like that same only make that sure here you have to update your database connection here because in our dot env right now i am using the database connection as a mysql and that is the mysql area here that is our env access and that is our db connection that will be as a unicode ci okay so make that sure you update now click as a save all and now i want to create another multi-authentication so if you want to create this multi-authentication in that case we have to do i want to go to that our database and in our migration and that is a by default all that laravel default table that will be just like that same before here right now by default that is a default field name as a name here i want to do and to take another new field okay you can also add another new field like i name it another new field that will be the username and user um, i name i want to do i want to make it i want to make it as a nonable okay for now i make it as a nonable so that will be as a nonable and also i want to take another field better i copy it that is a password everything will be same after that password i want to do and to take another field another two or three of this field i want to take one that will be uh, for the phone okay i name it as a phone and also i take another field i take another field that will be as a role okay as i told you i want to create one of the new um, multi-authentication system and role here i want to do i want to assign it i want to assign that will be two different role one will be as a admin role and also i want to take another one that will be as a user role okay here i want to make it as user and by default which user will be uh, selected here i want to do i want to make it as a default so that will be as a default and default i want to do and to make it uh, when you register one of the new user default that will be our role will be as a user okay here i simply update and there is our type type i want to use it as an enum type okay so that will be the enum sorry here i want to use it as an enum type that's all great and also i want to do i want to take another one so better that will be same i copy it and here i want to done to paste it i want to take another field as a status that will be the status status field here i want to take two one will be as a active another will be as a inactive okay inactive so that will be inactive and here default value i want to do i want to make it as a active great I hope friend every concept is very clear so i simply added some of the field in our user table as a username and also i take another field as a uh, phone and phone i make it as a string and then i take another one as a role role they have the two different role one will be as a admin another will be as a user role and default value i make it as a user and also another one as a status they have the two different status one is the active another will be as a inactive and default our user when this user will be created our status will be default as a active great so here i simply added updated some of the field in our user default table and also here when you update it we have to do we have to go to our model that is also laravel by default provided that will be just like that same before into this model folder if you go to that our user.php here we have to do we have to also make this field will be as a fillable that means now i have created some of the another essential field as a like as a username here you can do you can i have to add that things like that way that means one by one what about the field you have added you have to do you have to add it rather than you can also do another job you can also do like here i want to now remove it i want to do whatever the field is in our user table all that field i want to do and to make it as a fillable so in that case we can actually do this work with using that protected and then the guarded so that will be as a guarded z r d e d okay but that will be as a protected guarded and protected guarded i want to do and to make one of the empty array okay so now whatever the field i have actually added all that our field that will be as a fillable okay great so here i simply also update this part now it's totally fine now i want to do i want to migrate it okay here after that i want to migrate if you go back to that our um, again in our uh, here i have already installed that breeze and now i want to check it our php addition migrate is successfully working or not i copy it here i have already run that our npm run tape i have also run that php addition serve right now i want to better take another one okay so in our particular laravel 11 project i want to take another cmd and in here now i want to migrate it that is a php addition migrate so when you migrate it by default whatever the table is in here by default laravel also provided the uh, some of the default table that will be just like the same in laravel 9 and laravel 10. so now when you access a uh, migrate it then automatically that should be added all that our database table field in here right now let's check this out i want to check it 
here if you click as the enter yes you can see all that our default table is now successfully created okay that means everything is fine and as i told you make that sure here you have to do you have to update rather than you may get some of the error okay so you know i have right now i'm using that mysql and also i have updated it now we don't need it here i have already updated that our database name our database name as a student one and now if you go now click as a refresh yes all that our default table is now successfully created and now i want to also check that our registration is working or not in that case if you go to that our project sorry here right now i want to do want to refresh it i refresh it our register and into this register area here now i want to do want to create on the new register like i name it as a khan and that will be as a khan at the rate gmail.com and also password i want to put some of the password you demand to three four five you demand to three four five okay now click as a register now yes you can see there is a new register is successfully created and if you now go to that our database and into this database i have already added some of the field name as username email the password phone role and status right now if you click as a browse yes you can see there is a new user is successfully created as a name email and password here if you go and you can see by default i have already defined it role will be as a user and status will be as a active right here i have already done this job if you go to that our user table i have already make it as that the two role one is the admin role another is the user role and default i have already passed it as a user and also here for the status default i pass it as a active and that is the reason so our default user will be a role will be as a user and default status will be as active so now i want to do i want to see it some of the data that means if you want to hear in laravel 11 if you want to see this data the process will be just like that same before if you go to that laravel official website and from here if you go to that uh, database and into this database that is a seeding right that means here i want to actually insert some of the demo data i show you here i want to go to that seeding and into the seeding area here if you want to create some of the new seeder like that will be our command as a php artisan make seeder and that will be as a user seeder so whatever the name actually you choose right now and to done to simply copy it and now i want to do i want to simply run it so that will be the php artisan make seeder and here i want to create another new seeder and i just name that said seeder like as a user table okay that will be the user table seeder now this type of one of the seeder i want to create now if you click as enter now you can see it's now successfully created one of the seeder in our database in our seeder folder i have put it that name as a user table seeder dot php now if you go to that our project and into this database and into the seeders folder and that is the, our new the, um, our seeder i have created as a user table seeder so if from to this position now i want to do i want to insert some of the demo data i show you in that case we have to do in our seeder user table seeder i want to do in our run method area here we have to now work i want to load that our db so that will be as a db and here i want to use one of the query builder so that will be as a db table sorry that will be as a table and table which table i want to access i want to now access that our user table right here if you go that is actually our user table now i want to do on to access it that will be our user table and into this user table area here i want to do i want to insert this some of the data right as i told you i want to insert some of the demo data so i want to insert some of the empty object and in here first of all where i put some of the node that will be for the admin and i want to put our array array will be our name like here if you go to that our user table i have already assigned that name as a name username email that you can also add that as a phone you can also i already make this field as a nonable that means if there have no data then that will be not display any error okay so right and also there is a role and status now i want to do to insert some of the data so that will be as a name i name it as a name and for the admin i want to do i want to use that name that should be stored as a admin okay admin when i run it everything will be more clear to you and here after that i want to take our rest of all that field i copy it 
and I paste it here I simply paste some of the field like right now that will be the name I want to access that our another field name as a username so that will be as a username username I want to do to make it as a like as an admin and then another field I want to access it like as an email field so that will be as an email field email field that means that is actually all that our database field okay that means in particular this field area now I want to store some of the data with the seed so that will be the email email I want to now use it like as a admin Okay, that will be as a admin at the rate gmail.com. Okay, and then I want to do and to take another one as a password. Okay, that will be as a password field. Password, make that sure your spelling is correct because that is actually our field name as a password. So that will be our password. And our password that should be as a hash password. Right here, if you go by default, you can see they are also they are using the some of the hash password. Now I want to do I want to also change it. Here, when that will be stored, first of all, I want to done to use it as a hash. So that will be as a hash, and after that hash, that will be as a make. And our password for education purpose, I want to use it as a one one one. Okay, and also when you use it as a hash, here also you have to do have to load it. If you go to that your HTTP and into this HTTP that is in our uh, sorry, in our HTTP controllers, by default, when you install that Breeze, Breeze also provided some of the file. You can see all that our Breeze essential file is in here. So when you register it, um, that is also, you can see there is a hash. Okay, so now I want to download access that our hash, that will be the illuminate support from to the facet. I better copy it. And now I want to do, I want to access it in our user table, into this user table area here, we have to do, have to support that our hash. And also here I use it as a EDB. Also make that sure you have to do, you have to use that DB, okay? So here make that sure you have to use it. Great, I use access that our DB and also access that our hash and by this hash, it will be call one of the Mac, there is a Mac function and with this Mac function, it will be added. Our password will be as a one, one, one. And great and after that that is our another field as a role i want to access it that will be the role role i want to do i want to make it as a for the admin that will be the admin that will be store and also another one as a status a status i want to do i want to make it as a active okay so that will be as active this data i want to store it great so this will be for the our admin better i copy it now here after that i want to do I want to insert another data for the user okay make it as a user and that will be our name for the user that will be access that our user inserted username will be as a user and for the user our email will be as a user at the gmail.com okay gmail m-a-i-l right I want to better use it as a gmail.com and that will be also as a gmail.com and password will be same password field that will be the 111 role will be right now as a user and also status will be as active great so friend that's all here I simply added some of the data in our user um, table seeder and also is getting one of the error um, it's getting on the error it because of fall uh, here here we have to have to comma it and also after that I want to close it okay here if you now click as a save all and now you can see it's not totally fine here make that sure you have to do have to comma that means semicolon and that will be as a comma okay now fine and now I want to do I want to run it here if you want to run it we have to go to that our database seeder into this database seeder area here now we have to do have to call it i want to do and to simply call it so that will be as a this okay sorry here i want to call this function that will be this and this will be which one here we have to do have to call it so that will be as a call method i want to do and to call our which file i want to call that our uh, seeder name that is how i have created as a user table seeder i copy it now i want to do and to access it in our database seeder here we have to do have to call it our user table seeder class okay so that will be as a class class i simply call that class so here make that sure you have to do you have to call it right now that will be also not needed here i want to make it as a comment out okay that will be a totally comment out only when you run that as a seed by default this file will be executed as a database seeder will be executed and when this database seeder will be executed it will be called that our user table seeder okay here it will be called this your user table seeder and into this seeder area here i have already assigned uh, some of the admin values and also I have assigned some of the user value now let's check this out this data is successfully stored or not if you now click as a save all and it's getting another error as a this call function here you can say I didn't use that as a semicolon that will be obviously on the semicolon now click as a save all now that is fine 
and now i want to do i want to check it it's uh working or not so in that case we have to go again so in here i want to do and to run it that will be as a php artisan migrate fresh because here before i have already created one of the database right here i have already created one of the database table and i have already as 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 migrate all that our database table so now our previous data i want to do i want to remove it so if you want to remove that our previous all the data in that case we have to run it as a php artisan migrate and that will be as a fresh that means our previous all the table will be removed and that will be refresh again that means it will be migrate all that our database table again okay and after that i want i have called another one as a high high double hyphen as a seed that means that will be run our seed function and into the seed function area whatever the file uh, data i want to insert now that should be stored now let's check this out it's working or not here now i want to click as a enter and you can see first time what exactly that is done first time it's actually re remove all the tower database table that means it's drop all the tower database table and then you can see that is a dropping all tables that means all that our existing stable list will be as a drop then it's create this migration table again again it's created that our total migration table and after that that is actually seeding all that our data in our database okay now let's check this out if you now refresh it everything is the same that means before our previous all the data it should table it should be deleted and then it's actually restore all that our table again it's migrate all the table and if you now go to that our user yes you can see all that our cedar data right here i have already created for the admin and our user and all that our data is now successfully stored okay here you can see it's all the data is stored and also if you want to check it is successfully working or not you can also check it right now i have already mm, <laughs> removed it right so now that is our locking page and from the locking i want to do and locking with our admin i copy it so that will be the admin at the rate gmail.com and our password password i have actually set it as a one 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 and if you go you can see it's also inserted as a hash password right if you now access it as a one 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 now click as a locked in Hmm, you can see you are successfully able to log in as an admin. But here, one of the issue, you can see our drop down is not working. So into this before, into the drop down area, they have one of the logout. Okay, so right now we are using the default one. So now I want to better, um, if you go, that is actually in our uh, uh, default one of the layout. So that is our default layout. You will get it right now. That will be not needed. I want to better remove everything okay i want to close it i see it some of the data successfully which is fine so here if you go to that your resources into the resources view in our layout and that is our on the navigation layout and into this navigation layout here it's actually uh, display everything from here mm, that is our authenticated username you can see that is authenticated username is visible that means here you can see that is actually our authenticated username so now that is our authenticated username is visible but our drop down is not working here in particular this page you can also get that uh, default logout that is you can see that is clever on the form form is started form is ended because when you install that laravel laravel also provided default some of the route list right here if you also want to check it that will be the php artisan artisan route and then that will be the route list click as enter and you can see when you install that breeze authentication system it's also def provide default some of the um, route as a register route the profile route that is a logout fun route that is a locking right okay there is also forget password now everything is ready met now into the navigation that is on the form okay here that is on the form but there is a form is not loaded right now i don't want to separate take it i copy that this form okay I copy this form and in after that okay after that dashboard i want to, don't want to take it where i copy it and now because our logout will be needed right so now i want to do here before literally if you want to customize any theme you can actually theme add it right now to discuss about the functionality so that is our into this dev area that is actually our dashboard now here after that i want to simply take that our form okay so here by default our logout will be executed and that is our logout function as i told you that is one of the logout here if you go that is a logout is by default created in our auth authenticated session controller and that is the destroy method right now if you click as a save all and that will be hit that our authenticated session controller and into this authenticated session controller here you can see that is another destroy method here it will be actually log out this user and it will be returned directly to the home page.
okay now if you check it if you now go now that should be uh, loaded another menu okay another menu in our navigation here if you go you can see there's a logout now click as a logout hmm, you can see it's now successfully returned redirect to our home page so if you want to return redirect to the uh, our user page you can also pass it in that case only you have to do that means from here i want to don't return redirect to the locking page okay that will be the slash locking in our authenticated session controller area now click as a save all and now if you go i want to check it again now logging logging as a user password 111 locked in successfully locked in now click as a logout that is successfully return redirect to our slash locking page great so now friend i want to do i want to add some of the um, uh, functionality like when you logging as a user because right now they have the two user one is the admin role another is the user role okay so i want to do when a user will be logging then that will be written redirect to our dashboard sorry here that will be as one 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 then that will be written redirect to, the, uh, to the, our dashboard and when that will be as a admin then that will be written redirect to our admin dashboard so this type of one of the functionality i want to add so here if you want to do this work we have to do i want to go to uh, right now we don't need it i want to close it and here i want to go to that our web route that means in our route area that is our web.php so in particular this position i want to create another new route and better i want to create another a new uh, controller also here if you want to create this controller in laravel 9 10 that process will be just like that same here they have the no changes if you want to create this controller that will be a php okay i want to better make it as a php artisan and then the make controller controller and i want to create another new controller as an admin controller okay admin controller now click as a enter and now now a new uh, controller is successfully created and you can get this controller into the same position that means in our auth into this auth area there is a controller into this controller area i have created our new controller as an admin controller so this process is also just like that same before they have the no changes so now better i want to in our web.php i want to create on the new route okay so that will be as a route i simply loaded this route you can also copy it by default they have also provided some of the profile route where i want to copy it and now in here i want to create on the new route name our url will be as a admin slash dashboard okay that will be as admin dashboard dash right so that will be as a dashboard and then i want to i have already created one of the controller as a admin controller here first job is we need to do we need to update it now we have to use it i copy it the process will be same oh, in our laravel um eight nine ten the same process here we have to do have to use it as a app http controllers and backslash our controller name as a admin controller i copy it now that will be here as a admin controller right so i simply successfully support it now we can able to access that our controller as a admin controller now i want to support that our admin controller and into this admin controller i want to create on the new method as a admin dashboard admin dashboard now this type of the method i want to create and also i want to update that our name our name route will be as a admin dashboard okay so now i want to create this method as a admin dashboard in our admin controller now go to that our admin controller in here i want to create this method that will be as a public and then the function okay and our method name will be as a admin dashboard and that is our method great so into this method only i want to do i want to return one of the view page so that will be return one of the view page and view page better in our admin i want to create on the folder and here i want to create on the new file as admin underscore dashboard dashboard great that's all okay so now i want to create this folder better in our view that means here we have to go to that our resources and resources view folder i want to now create on the new folder and i just named that folder as a admin and in here i want to create on the new file i create on the new file as a admin dashboard our extension will be as a blade blade.php okay and here i want to load one of the html file so that will be the html i want to load that html and then that will be the title okay title sorry title title i want to want to make it as a, a admin page okay that will be as a admin page okay and also after that i want to put that body and then that will be as a h1 tag as a admin main dashboard 
okay good that's all so here now what exactly that will be do now if you want to access it if you want to access our admin slash dashboard it will be hit that our controller admin controller admin dashboard method that means in our admin controller admin dashboard that is the method will be executed and it will be written redirect to our that is the view page and that is our html view page that should be loaded right now let's check this out if you know click as a save all and now i want to check it here if you want to now access it class admin slash dashboard now click as enter yes you can see it's now successfully um get it our view page that i have created as a admin dashboard so now friend in particular that position i want to do when this user will be locking as a admin then that will be return redirect to our admin dashboard when this user will be locking as a user then that will be return redirect to our default dashboard so here we have to do one things now i want to do um, like when you locking as a admin then you can only able to access that our admin dashboard and when you locking as admin admin will be able to access that our direct locking that dashboard you can say right now i am locking as a admin so here i want to do friend where i want to log out okay i want to log out and now i'm locking uh, like as a user user and password 111 click as a locked in when you locked in as a user user that user that should be not access that our admin slash dashboard if you now click as enter you can see right now i am already locking as a user but i can also able to access that our admin dashboard here we can actually now manage it that, that means we can actually protect this our url with using that midi lawyer as i told you that now that is our important part here how to uh, create that our midi lawyer and how can register that midi lawyer in laravel 11 i want to discuss about that things with you because you know laravel 10 by default you will get this type of one of the midi lawyer you can see into this midi lawyer they have by default a lot of the file is in here but into the laravel 11 they have the no midi lawyer folder okay you can see there is a no middleware folder and in laravel 10 when you create some of the middleware and into this middleware we can have to do have to register it in our kernel.php but in laravel 10 you have to register all that your middleware in our bootstrap folder they have one of the bootstrap folder and that is our app.php in this area here we have to do we have to actually register it i show you uh, right now authenticated session controller that will be not needed first of all i want to do i want to create one of the new middleware if you want to create this middleware in laravel 11 process will be the same for the creating that middleware here if you go to that our security and into this security uh, that is in our basic maybe you know the basic you can see the basic and here we have to go to that our middleware now i want to do i want to create one of the new middleware if you want to create it that will be as a php artisan make middleware i want to better copy it and now i want to create on the new middleware here after that i want to simply paste it sorry here i want to i want to copy it and now here i want to simply access it so that will be as a php artisan and that will be as a make middleware and i want to create another middleware for education purpose as a role okay i name it as a role this type of one of the middleware i want to create now click as a enter now you can see it's now created one of the or default one of the folder as a middleware and into this middleware area now i have created as a role.php as i told you here which things will be needed that will be only visible rather than that will be not visible you can see now it's actually created one of the middleware folder and into this middleware folder area here i have created one of the middleware name as a role.php so now our first job is we need to do we need to actually register that our middleware okay so in laravel 10 here if you create some of the middleware and this middleware we can actually uh, register it in our kernel.php so in laravel 10 uh, 11 here that will be a little bit changed here if you want to register that our middleware we have to register it in our bootstrap and app.php so into this app.php that is one of the middleware here you can see that is our with middleware function and into this with middleware function area here you have to do you have to assign it in that case we have to do only we have to call it so that is our middleware by default one of the function as a middleware here with this middleware we have to do we have to call it our allies okay allies so that will be the allies and into this allies area here we have to now call it our name in which name you want to access right now i access it by the name as a role 
okay and that is our role and into this role area now we have to uh, load our specific this file location that i have already created our middle middleware name as a role so that is actually our path right here we have to do have to take this path i copy it now in our um, app.php here we have to do have to add it so that will be the app slash uh, http slash middleware and into this middleware folder i have created that name as a role okay here we have to do have to call it that is a role class that's all so now that is the our middleware is successfully registered and now we can able to access this middleware by the name as a role okay i hope friend the concept is very very much clear to you and also here obviously we have to do have to load on the semicolon now i click the semicolon i click the save all now that is totally fine so now i want to do i want to access that our middleware first of all in our middleware area i want to put some of the condition because as i told you here user that will be not able to access that our admin dashboard okay here i want to protect it into the our middleware that i have created as a role.php in here i want to assign another parameter i want to pass it another one as a role okay that will be as a role i will simply pass it and then here after that i want to do and to put on the if condition okay i want to put on the if condition and in this condition area here also there is a request i want to do and to get it our requested user that will be the requested user and with this user i want to access that our user table role field okay so that will be as a role field role when that will be the not equal equal as a our that is the requested role okay here with this we will get it our user as a admin or user here we get it when that will be the not match that means when you locking as a admin rather than when you logging as a user when that will be not match with our requested one then here i want to do i want to simply re redirect so that will be the return and then the redirect redirect okay okay that will be return redirect return redirect to our and uh, direct dashboard page dashboard means here our route name our route name as a dashboard here that will be return redirect to the dashboard that's all i want to do and to add it so now we have to do we have to protect our url okay here we have to protect our which url we have to protect that our admin dashboard so if you want to now protect it we have to go our web.php and into this web.php like that is actually our url right so now i want to do and to protect it by this middleware here we have you have to do you have to load it as a route and route now want to create another group middleware so that will be the middleware Okay, that will be as a m i double d l e w a r e okay that will be the middleware and into this middleware area here that will be our name by default that will be two one by default that is actually provided as a auth middleware with this auth middleware it will be actually check if this user is locking or not here i want to call one of the default middleware as a auth middleware and also i want to do want to access our another one another one name i have already registered it by the which name i have already registered it in our app.php by the name as a role i copy it now here that will be our role and this role i only want to do and to assign that our admin and that is our requested one because here i have already put one of the condition you know by this request right so that is actually our requested one here it will be check it user is locking or not and also it will be check it as a role as a admin or not okay here after that i want to do and to call it as a group so that will be as a group and into this group area i want to do and to call this function so that will be as a call function and into this function area here i want to do i want to simply take it so that means in here now i want to do i want to simply pass that our that is our route okay that means here that is the route if you want to access it user must have to be logged in here with this default auth middleware it will be check it and also it will be check it our auth that means role as admin or not when both of these condition will be perfect then only this user can able to access it now let's check this out our mid middleware is working or not if you now click as a save all and now i want to check it here i want to access that our dashboard right now you can see right now i'm already locking as a user so this user that not should be accessed that our admin dashboard now let's check this out i want to don't access it our admin slash dashboard now click as a enter yes you can see now you are not able to access that our admin dashboard it will be returned redirect to you directly to the dashboard if you access it again as admin slash dashboard it's now returned redirect to the dashboard okay that means our middleware is now successfully executed 
So how can working with the middleware is very important one of the part that is a little bit different because they have the no folder as a middleware. How can create some of the middleware? How to register some of the middleware in our app.php? Now I hope friend the concept is very clear to you. And now if you are locking as a admin, like right now I'm locking as a admin and then one 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 now logged in and I'm now able to access that our admin dashboard which is fine okay so that is the most important one of the part uh, they have some of the little changes in Laravel uh, 11 now I hope the concept is very clear to you so that is the major changes actually in Laravel 11 and rest of everything will be same like here that, and also there is another one as a email folder so here you will not get that email by default here if you create the email folder in that case only you need to do you need to run it as a PHP addition make email then that is an email folder will be generated as I told you is very minimalistic uh, if you there's now little bit a lot of the file actually which things is not needed so here now our total Laravel 11 will be very light one of the mood okay it will be very light mood some of the essential file which is needed so that will be default one if you want to access some of the file if you want to load that API you have to do you have to install it if you want to load that middleware in that case you have to create that middleware and rest of everything will be just like that same which you have already know in Laravel 9 and Laravel 10. So friend I hope the concept and each and everything is very clear what exactly the new in Laravel 11. Okay. So if you have any doubt if you have any query just let me know about it I will be in your touch. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.